Right, so I know we've talked about limits before. We're going um, to take another look at limits, but you know, in a little bit more detail. So you remember what limits are, right? Basically, the limit is what value f of x is approaching as x approaches c, right? So if you look here, this is the point C on the x-axis. As I'm approaching C from the left-hand side, right, the y values are decreasing and decreasing, and it looks like they're going to hit that value L, whatever it is. Now, as I'm approaching C from the right, the y values are increasing and increasing, and it looks like they also eventually might get close to that value L. Okay? Notice nowhere did I say it will get actually to the value of L because that is irrelevant in the case of a limit. A limit just looks at what value is the graph approaching okay so and value always means y value okay so that's a limit so there are several ways that we can ascertain what a limit will be and if the graph the the y values are approaching like l from the left and from the right if they're approaching the same value we say then the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l, okay, if they're approaching the same value. So, let's take a look at this for a minute. Um, estimate the limit of this using a graph. All right, so if we take a look at that, it's 4x plus 1. That's the function, right? If you graph that, okay, that's what it looks like, right? So now you want to find the limit as x approaches negative 1. Well, we see that as we, this is negative 1. As I approach negative 1 from the left-hand side, the y values are going up towards negative 3. And as I approach negative 1 from the right-hand side, the y values are going down to negative 3. Because it's going up to negative 3 and it's going down towards negative 3, I say the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 4x plus 1 is negative 3. It really doesn't matter what the actual value is at negative 1. Now, to support using a table of values, we're at x equals negative 1, right? To the left of that, what values are there? So in so these are the things that are basically the foundations of calculus. And in calculus, we really look at things really, really up close, zoomed in. So when I say what numbers are to the left of negative 1, we don't really say negative 2 and negative 3. Really, it's negative 1.00001, right? Like those are the values. So to the left, you know, I have negative 1.001, and then further out, I have negative 1.01. So if I plug those values in here, I get negative 3.04, and then I get negative 3.004. So as x approaches negative 1, the y values, do you see how they're, cl they're getting closer and closer to negative 3? Now let's go on the opposite side. To this side of negative 1, there is like negative 0.999, negative 0.9, and so on. So if I plug in negative 0.999, I get negative 2.996. At negative 0.9, I get negative 2.6. So look at this. As the x values are approaching negative 1 from the other side, the y values are approaching negative 3, right? From both sides, they're approaching negative 3. So that's proof that, I mean, that's supporting what we said, that the limit at x equals negative 1 is negative 3.
Did I ever plug in negative 1? No, because I don't care. That's not what a limit is about. Okay. Huh? I mean, sure. Or you could, it's, yes. Okay. So take a look at this. You can have different situations. Okay. You can have different situations. So look at this one. As x approaches t from this side, the y value is going down to L. As x approaches c from this side, the y value is going to L. So definitely the limit is L because from both sides they're approaching L. Okay. What's the actual value of the graph at x equals c? It's undefined. Okay. But that does not change anything about the limit. Now take a look at this. As x approaches c, we're approaching L. We're approaching L, so the limit is definitely L. What's the actual value of the function at C? What's the actual value? It's N. You see that? The actual value is this point, N. So the limit is one number. The actual value is another number. Again, that doesn't change anything about the limit. In this case, as I approach C from the right and from the left, the value, uh, the Y values are approaching L. So definitely the limit is L. And look, the actual value of the graph is also L. But again, that's irrelevant, right? So you could have really any of the values. Okay, we've gone over this before. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Okay, you need to estimate the limit using a graph. Well, we know how to graph this. We can just simplify this. Right? Just rewrite it. These cancel. So this becomes the limit as x approaches 4 of x plus 4. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, but this function had a denominator of x minus 4. So what's happening at x equals 4? Not an asymptote because it went away. It's a removable discontinuity. But what would the where? So right over here. Right over here, there is a tiny removable discontinuity. Right? So, as you approach 4 from the left-hand side, what y value is the graph approaching? What do you think? About 8. And from the other side, it's also approaching 8. So the limit is actually equal to 8. Okay? And if you put in values, right, if you put in 3.99, you get 7.99 or 7.999, right? It's also approaching 8. Yeah, it's close to 8, so that's what we're saying, right? Because at 3.999, it says 7.99, and then it says 7.999, so it must be around there. And then from the other side, at 4.001, it's 8.001 and then 8.01, .01, so also approaching 8 from there, okay? All right. Huh? The 4 is undefined. Yeah, at 4, it's actually undefined. But again, it's irrelevant because we don't ever plug it in when we're looking for a limit, okay? All right, now, for your homework, this is a lot. I don't need you to do this, okay? We're doing this right now so you can visually see what's happening. For your homework, show the graph of each function on your paper, right? So, like, sketch a graph. Um, you don't have to go NASA precise on them. Um, you can, so if you have a function that, like this one, you could, it's probably easier for you to just graph it by hand, okay? If you have a function that you don't exactly know what it looks like, you can use a calculator, right? Just, you know, 
Oh, just like, you know, draw the function and then estimate the limit by observation. You can use like the trace features to estimate the limit. Okay. Do not make a table. All right. So now if you didn't hear that and if you go and make a table, it's on you. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Let's talk about one sided limits. Sometimes it's more practical that we only have to look at like one side. We don't have to look at the left and the right. In that case, um, if you want to find the limit of a function as x approaches c from the left hand side, we say x approaches c from the minus side. And then, so that's from the left side. And then if we want to look from the right side, it's x approaches c from the positive side. Now, if the limit as x approaches c from the positive side is L, if the limit as x approaches c from the negative side is also L, we say the limit is equal to L, okay? All right, so let's take a look here. This is a piecewise function. It's saying to find the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 from the negative side. This is 0 right there. From the negative side, as you approach from the left-hand side, what's the limit? What's the y, what y value is it approaching? 5. From the, as you, okay, as you, now, what's the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side? Also 5. So what's the limit as x approaches 0? Good. Now, what's the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the negative side? 0. What about from the positive side? 5. So the limit does not exist. Okay. x equals negative 3 is here. Okay. So as you approach negative 3 from the left-hand side, right, the left-hand side, this is where the graph is, right? The graph is approaching a y value of 0. But as you approach it from this side, where is the graph now? Here. It's approaching a y value of 5. And because these two numbers are not the same, then the limit as x equals negative 3 is d and e. Okay, now. Now. Okay. People. Okay, people. What's f of 0? f of 0? 5. What's f of negative 3? 2. It's not 0, it's not 5, it's 2. Right? At negative 3, f of negative 3 is this number 2. So it's completely irrelevant, independent of a limit. Okay, yep. As x approaches negative 3 from the minus side, from the left hand side, as you approach negative 3 from the left hand side, here is where the graph is. What y value is it approaching? Okay, so 0. And that one. Okay, here we go. Estimate each one or two sided limit if it exists. Okay, let's quickly sketch these, okay? Because you should know what these look like. Okay, x is less than 1, x cubed plus 2. Okay, so when you put 1 into that function, at x equals 1, how much is it? 3. But it's an open circle, right? Okay. And then it's x cubed plus 2, so we know that, you know, that's going to look like this. Remember what x cubed looks like? f of x cubed, uh, f of x equals x cubed, it looks like that. So if you have f of x equals x cubed plus 2, it would have looked like that. Okay, so now, the next one. 2x plus 1, so at x equals 1, how much is the y value for this one? Also 3, but that one's closed, so you just close the circle. And that's a linear equation with a slope of 2, so it looks like this. Looking at the graph, 
what is the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side? As x approaches 1 from the negative side. So as x approaches 1 from the negative side, what y value is it approaching? 3. As x approaches 1 from the positive side, what y value is it approaching? Also 3. From the positive side? From the positive side, also approaching 3. Because those two are the same, this is also 3. Then it's D and E. Okay. Let's take a look at this one. This was drawn for us. Yay. This is uh, from like a TI 84 graph. Okay. It's pixelated. This is when we had pixelated stuff. Okay. So, um, X, okay, negative 2. As X approaches negative 2 from the minus side, from the left hand side, it's approaching what number? 3. As x approaches negative 2 from the positive side this way, that goes to negative 4. And so at negative 2, this is D and E. There is no limit. The limit does not exist. <clears throat> huh? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're open or closed circles. They're just approaching different numbers. Well, they can't both be closed. Right? Yeah. No. We're doing this. Okay? Okay. So here we go. As x appro approaches 3 from the negative side. So here is 3. 1, 2, 3. That's 3. Okay. From the negative side. Okay. As you're approaching 3 from the negative side, follow the graph is going down to negative infinity. Okay? So... Okay, it's going to negative infinity. Now, um, can you get on a spaceship and go to x equals 4? Yes, you can. Can you get on a spaceship and go to infinity? No, you can't because we don't know where it is. So it's going to negative infinity. In parentheses, we also say D and E. You have to give me both of those, okay? But it's not just plain old DNE. That's different. This is negative infinity DNE. So it's, there's like an infinite limit there. Okay. As X approaches 3 from the positive side, where does it go? Positive infinity or infinity. Are those two the same? No. So the limit does not exist. Because... But it's because infinity does not exist. There is no. Okay. 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 So here we go. Zero. Zero from the negative side. Where is the graph going? Negative infinity. Right. Zero from the positive side. Where is the graph going? Also negative infinity. Okay. So here, you can say negative infinity D and E, okay? Because technically, like, just because they're both negative doesn't mean they're the same. Okay, here we go. Oh, boy. This is not sine of X. This is sine of 1 over X. And take a look at the, uh, the scale of this. It's going from negative 1 to 1, right? So this is 0.75, which means like this is just from negative 0.25 to 0.25. So that's a very tiny, tiny interval. And what's it doing in that interval? It's oscillating like mad, right? So now it's saying as x approaches 0. Okay, so as x approaches 0 from the negative side, do we know where the y value is over there? You have no idea. So it's just plain old D and E. Same from the positive side, and so same here. When there are, hang on, when there are heavy oscillations like that, the limit is D and E, okay? Would we, I mean, you can't even plug in, a, you can't, I mean, it's 
non-existent at that point anyway, okay? You can't even plug in zero. Okay, so we got some DNEs all over the place here. Okay, so let's take a look at why the limit would not exist, okay? So the limit of f of x as x approaches c does not exist if, here is one scenario, f of x approaches different values from the left and right. So what example would be an example of that? Like b, right? If you approach different values from the left and right. So example b. Or f of x increases or decreases without bound, like it goes to the infinities from the left or the right. So that could be, which example do you think? C or D, yeah. Or um, if, it oscillate, if it oscillates between two fixed values very quickly, then yeah. So now, if you look at like, I don't know, uh, you know, this is f of x equals sine x, okay? As x approaches zero, the limit here is not DNE. This is not oscillating like crazy. This is just, you know, clear as day, right? It's when we have those. Okay, now, you should be able to figure out the limit just by looking at a function, okay? So you should be able to, like, figure something out. Okay, so now, take a look at this, uh, this one here. So, as x approaches 4, okay, the limit as x approaches 4, okay. Now, if this x was 4, what would the denominator be? 0. And what happens when you divide by 0? It's undefined because the number gets infinitely large. Do you guys remember this? So, now, we have to figure out what is the limit of this? So to do that, we have to find the limit as x approaches 4 from the negative side of this and the limit as x approaches 4 from the positive side of this. Okay. So we definitely know that as x is approaching 4, this is going to be infinity, right? But is it going to be positive infinity or is it going to be negative infinity? Now, what number, what's an example of a number as x approaches 4 from the negative side? Okay, 3 is way too far. 3.9999999999, okay? Now, if x was that, would the numerator be positive or negative? Okay. What about the denominator? If x was 3.9999999, it would be negative. Positive or, or negative? This would be negative infinity or DNE. Okay. What's an example from here? 4. Point blah, 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 blah. With that, if you put it in here, make it positive or negative? positive, right? So this is definitely DNE, okay? Okay, what about this one? Let's take a look here. Limit as x approaches 0 from the negative side, And limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side. Okay. Example of 0 from the negative side. What number? Yeah, negative 0.99999. Would this be positive or negative upstairs? Positive. What about here? Positive because you're squaring it. So this would definitely go up to positive infinity. What about here? Also positive infinity DNE. So this will be infinity DNE.
What about here? Oh, negative 2. Okay, so when it, when x equals negative 2, again, we have 0 in the numerator. I'm sorry, in the denominator. All right? Okay. So now, limit as x approaches negative 2 from the negative side and from the positive side. Okay, so this would be what? From the negative side of negative 2. So it'll be like negative 2 point, negative 2 point zero 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 one, right? Okay, would the numerator be positive or negative? Negative. What about this? Well, it's positive because we're squaring it, right? So basically it's like I have, it's like I have negative 2 over negative 2.0001 plus 2 squared, like that, okay? So that'll be positive infinity. I'm sorry, negative, negative, negative. What about here? Same thing. So this will be negative infinity dn. Because as the denominator approaches zero, any function will be infinitely large, infinity. Huh? Because can you point to infinity? I can point to x equals four, but do we know where infinity is? No, that's why. Right? It's an undefined number. Okay. Okay, now, these are, okay, all of the limits we did so far, were limits as x approaches a number. x approaches 0, x approaches 1, x approaches 4. Now, how about if x approaches infinity, right? Well, those are, I mean, similar. So let's take a look. The limit of this as x approaches infinity, this is end behavior. You've been doing it since algebra 2, right? As x approaches infinity, to the right hand side, what y value is the graph approaching? Negative 3. What about negative infinity? Negative 3. Okay, here we go. As x approaches infinity here, DNE, we there is no way to know. Is it going to be 1, negative 1, point 0.1, point 0.2, negative? We don't know. So it's straight up the end. There is no way to know. Okay? Ooh, look at this one. I love this function. This is one of my favorite functions of all time. And it's e to the x times sine of 3 pi to the x. So on the one side, right, look at this. If you graph e to the x, it would look like that, right? And negative e to the x would look like that. And then imagine if you took sine of x and like squished it in the middle, it would take the shape of the e to the x's. Do you see how cool that is? Okay, so as you go to positive infinity, what's the limit? DNE, we have no idea. That thing is going up to infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, what is it? Zero. It just goes down and dies to zero. Okay? All right, so that's it for today.